Hi and welcome to part 5 of my tutorial how to create a scrolling platformer in Scratch. Uh, today we are going to look at how to add in collectibles into this level. So before we do that what we need to do is make a few little tweaks to the platforms sprite because we're going to make use of this sprite to do the collectibles as well. So let's have a look. What we need to do is make this a little bit more generic. What that means is um, reusable really for other things. So in the moment we've got this bit of code in here where we're repeatedly creating clones for each part of the game. So we're going to change that so that we can do it using a custom block instead which will make the code a lot neater. So create a new custom block and call it clone at x and then add in using the options a number input call it x and then a text element and say y colon and add in a variable a number input called y and we'll run without screen refresh okay now in here we're going to do what we do down here so we can take we can create a clone let me just duplicate that create a clone of myself um, change x by and now put the x in from there like that and we want another change so we'll just put another change underneath change y by and drag in the y from there and we've still got the next costume underneath so now we can reuse this rather than writing clone change next costume we can use this in here so i'll move the um, clone at to down there and another one afterwards and we'll plug in the values that we had in here so we got 360 for the first y of zero and change x by 360 for the second and y of zero and that replaces all of that there with that little bit there which is much neater so let's run that make sure it works yep so the level is still positioned just as it was which is what we wanted so that makes it really easy now to add another one underneath for another part of the level without having to rewrite this part every time we can just create the next bit of the level one after the other in there um, while we're here let's also make a few more changes at the moment when the green flag is clicked we show the platform but that's not what we want now we're going to make it so we hide it at the beginning to make it not flash onto the screen like that okay what we're going to do is we've got this um, level variable here but at the moment we're not using this this is supposed to be so which level we're on we're going to be able to show a different level so what we're going to introduce is a new um, if else condition here and we're going to pop it just here around the uh, switch uh, costume and clone and we're going to check that level equals one for this first bit here level equals one so we only create for level one if level variable equals one so that then frees us up to start doing new things with new levels um, what we also want to do is add another hide again at the top of here when as soon as we get set up so that any existing um, bits of level that are visible when we start setting up the level are hidden okay that looks good to me so i think that's what i wanted to do let me just check that works yeah if we die yeah all is good right then so now we can move on to looking at how to add collectibles and collectibles are going to work very much like platforms uh, for all terms of purposes so what we can do is duplicate this uh, platform sprite and if we go into it click the little i rename it as collectibles like so okay now we need a new costume however for this um, now you could go to my uh, scratch project on my griff patch tutor account um, or you can draw your own so we're going to just draw a quick one here um, in vector mode let's draw a filled circle to begin with um, hold down shift while doing let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing because we can make it quite small hold down shift while you're drawing this um, let's see how it works make a perfect circle like so and the color of this if we go into click on this little uh, color space thing we want it to be a dark yellow so we click on yellow and then bring down the brightness to say midway now click on the little white to have the other color and this one wants to be 
uh, transparent. Now you have to select that by clicking back onto the color palette, clicking on this line. Okay, like that. Now click on the fill tool and the circle tool to fill into a circle. Like this, and click roughly in the middle. So we've got a dark yellow outside and a transparent middle. That's nice. Now we really want this positioned in the middle of the sprite at the moment. You can see the offset is in a slight offset there. So click on the set costume center and find the middle and then release the mouse. Like that so it's nicely centered. Okay, now we want a middle circle again. So change the circle tool. We're going to change the color to yellow and we're going to draw another circle in the middle of this circle. I'm going to reposition it to be in the middle like this and then fill again and this time we're going to go from yellow click on that one to invert uh, to white and we want the same thing so yellow on the outside no nope, wrong way around so click here to change it around white on the outside yellow in the middle like that okay that's my collectible so let's call it dot in the costume name back to the scripts so how do we make this work for these new little collectibles it's a little bit more tricky but it's pretty much the same as the positioning of the level so what we can do is change like this clone at first we need to change because what we're going to do is position the uh, little collectible dots all over the level but they need to be at exact positions so we're not going to do a change x we're going to do a set x so change this to change x and change y's to be sets and we want set x to be x set y to be y and we don't need an x costume either get rid of that so that's our new clone at for this collectible sprite not for the platform one for collectibles and then the positions so for now let's just get rid of the first one let's put in um, 50 and 0 in there just to see if we can get one to appear where it says switch costume to change that to dot like that and um, anything else we need to do in there i'm not sure let's run it and see what happens right let's see this is interesting so obviously that is far too big but also there's two of them now why is that well i can tell you that straight away because the way this code is working we're going into setup we're hiding one and then we're setting the position of it, then we're calling clone and creating another one. So we've got two. So what actually happens is the one that we want is the clone, but we don't want the original one before the clone. We want to hide that in the during the game. To fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to move this sex X and Y above the clone so that when we create this clone, we're going to be positioning it to where we want it to be and then create the clone. So that clones us at that position and then we're going to add in a set x at the very bottom and add in minus 99999 to be far off the screen so we've created one clone at the position we wanted and the one that's uh, that the original sprite that we positioned is then moved off screen off level and we're not going to see it again so if we run it now there we go we have one sprite at 50 by zero and uh, the other one's hidden so if we clone a second one at 100 by 50 run that again there we go now we've got two so that's great we can now create um, collectibles anywhere on the level we want the biggest problem is actually knowing where to put them because it can be hard to position them nicely on this level um, just by guesswork so what we can do is make that job a little bit easier uh, just before we do that let me just shrink down this costume because it's too big so I'll just select all of that and shrink it down, reposition it back in the middle. Let's try that again. That's much better. Okay, so what we're going to do is do a little bit of scripting just to be able to show where on the level that we want to position things. So move to the stage and we're going to add in a new global variable for all sprites. So all uppercase, so we can tell it's a global sprite. And we're going to call this mouse, like that. 
click OK. OK, so there's our mouse variable. And now add in an event when key pressed. And we'll have M for mouse. Like that. And we're going to set mouse when M is pressed to be. Now this is a little bit complicated, but it's a join from the operators block that joins two words together. And we're going to join together more joins. So we need another join into the second half like that. And in the middle join, we're going to put comma and a space. And then we need a plus in the left hand side of the join. And we're going to put mouse X plus scroll X. And in the right hand side, where the world is written, we're going to write mouse Y plus scroll Y, like that. So when the M button key is pressed on the keyboard, we're going to set this mouse variable to the current position of the mouse, offset by the scroll, with a comma and a space, and then the mouse Y and the scroll Y. So have a look what that does if I run the project. So if I put the mouse over that first collectible and press M, see how the mouse is now 50 by zero. And that's exactly where we put this collectible, wasn't it? 50 by zero, if we look at the collectibles, there we are. If I look at where the second one is and press M, 151, 151, one off, but that's because I moved the mouse slightly offset. But now if I put the mouse and press M, this will tell me where I need to put the X and the Y to make it a uh, collectible there. So if I was to move across over here, and I wanted a collectible over here, I just put my mouse there, press M. It says 363 by 63. So let's duplicate one of these and type in those numbers. 363 by uh, 63. And run it again and see. There we go. My collectible is now exactly where I told it to be. And I can do that all over the place. So I could have one just here over the top of the water. So if I press M here, clone my new one and type in 721 by 71, run that. There it is, and I want one right above that one say, as well, so say there, then again, duplicate my clone, uh, seven, I'll do the same X, but the value of 130 in my Y. Run that again, there you are. So that's a really useful little feature to be able to find positions where you want to place your collectibles. So the next thing you can hide that mouse is by un unshowing the mouse there like that. Next thing you could do, you might find useful if you go into the stage and just set mouse, is to add in a show variable just there, show variable mouse. That way, when you've hidden it, and you press N the next time, up it pops, even if uh, even if it wasn't visible because you hid it. Right, that's great. So. The only thing left for this tutorial is to be able to collect these little uh, circles, which will be fun. So let's stop this, go into the collectibles, sprite. And now this is going to be in the tick script, this one here. So we've got a tick here where we're positioning the uh, collectible. We now want to have a check to see whether we've touched the collectible in here. So put in an if condition in there, like that, and put in a if touching player like that then what we want to do is control delete this clone okay let's run that to see if this works there we go now we're able to collect these clones these collectibles that was easy wasn't it so what if you want to have a little um, number on the screen showing you how many that you've uh, collected right for that Let's add in a new um, variable for all sprites. So it's going to be uppercase, call it collected like that. And click OK. Put that down there for now. And set collected in the setup. Set it to zero because we've not collected any at the start of the level. And then Every time you have a touching player, we want to change 
collected by one before we delete it. Now if you run that again, every time we collect one, collected goes up by one. And if we die, collected goes back to zero and the collectibles are there again, like that. Okay, and that's it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, we shall look at adding uh, end of level. So I hope you enjoyed that and come back next time. Bye.